Hello, Brave Awakened Ones. This is Veronica of High Rum Holistics, Lady V. Thank you, supporters, subscribers, and Patreons. Please share these videos with those who you think it might resonate with. If you're interested in any of my services, books, merch, t-shirts, webinars, sessions, and higher realm magic information and meditations, please visit higherrealmholistics.com. Hey, Brave Awakened Ones, Lady V here. I wanted to share my last and final lesson, ascension lesson, awakening lesson with you guys that I just got my aha moment on it. Um, I'm still processing it. I was like, should I share it or shouldn't I share it? And then a few of you guys who I'm very familiar with popped into my head and was told, this is going to hit home with you. So I have to share this with you. As you guys know from my last video, I was blessed with this amazing office. Everything I dreamt of for the past two years um, at a ridiculous cost without even coming out of my pocket, right? Not until February, and I already got the key a few days ago. And the blessings have been pouring in again. Let me share some more blessings. I just got back. That's why I'm dressed. Usually I would put on one of my t-shirts, right? But I want to share more blessings because remember I said my cup is going to overflow and my coffers will be full because I damn deserve it. <laughs> And we did that meditation together. So, yeah, here is how my cup is over is still filling up. See this entire section right here with these cabinets and everything? Yeah. I just got this from my old employer, the old hospital I used to work in in Miami, for 260 bucks. Yeah. This is for my front office, this, all this, $260 they gave it to me for. And the um, guy who does, switches out the screens and everything like that for everyone. Um, these big screens, 37 inch screens, so I can teach on, I got for $37 each. Okay. And then I got this and this, 40 bucks. We love seats. It's perfect colors because the carpet they're putting into the office is uh, dark blue and it has blue and green, and a little bit of yellow. And these two chairs, 25 bucks. Okay, so my cup is still filling up. I mean, wow. Okay, just wow. So the blessings are just pouring in. Now you'd think I'd be like, ah, but I have this heaviness in my heart and it has to do with my kids. Um, we still have not come back yet as a unit. Um, I am talking to my daughter. I've not heard from my son since October, since my daughter's wedding, when she called him up and said whatever it is that she said to make him stop talking to me because she was upset with me for whatever reason. Um, and uh, I was, what the aha moment that my oversoul gave me was, you know, you have these thoughts running through your head when you're in this state. It's like such a struggle. It's like, I should be, I was, it's like, I'm trying to, Fight the, the excitement with the depression, the disappointment, back and forth, okay? Then I heard, your life cannot be for anybody else but you. Say that again. Your life cannot be for anybody else but you. And that's when I was like, Oh, so that's the lesson because many parents out there, especially if you 
grew up in an abusive situation. I've mentioned before, you know, I grew up in a horribly abusive uh, childhood up until my early 20s, um, being abused by my mom and my uncle. Um, at the age, when I was in the third grade, I was like eight, nine years old, was the first time I attempted suicide. And that, like, it was that night that my daughter's spirit came to me. And Archangel Gabriel was there also. And that's the first time I met my daughter. It was her soul. I was nine, eight, nine years old. And I saw exactly what she was going to look like. I knew what name she, she told me what name she wanted. I knew exactly what she looked like. I was given her entire soul history. And that if I wanted to enter into the soul contract, that she would help me stay here on earth. Because I had an important mission. And if I left, not only would I lose out on my soul evolution and going to the next level, but I would not be there to help with ascension and that I was an extremely important part in this. That's I kept being told, you're being kept here for a time such as this. You need to, that's what Archangel Gabriel said to me, you need to be here for a time such as this. I didn't know what ascension and awakening was. I didn't understand any of that. I was a little kid. I was eight. So um, I entered into the soul contract with her. I said, yes. Okay. Um, I had no idea how she was going to come about, meaning my pregnancy. Um, but she came about when she came about. Uh, I was shown at that time what was going to happen. I honestly thought I was supposed to die. When I gave birth to her, um, I was. Sh it looked like me dying at the time. What ended up happening was I had eclampsia, and if anybody knows what eclampsia is, it's crazy high blood pressure. You can have a streak, a, 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 a stroke, a seizure. Um, uh, you could have a, a cardiac arrest. <clears throat> I had all three. I went into labor. And I had a, I had a, uh, a stroke, then I went into a seizure, then I had cardiac arrest. They gave me 30% chance of living. The doctor, my daughter almost didn't make it um, because they did not want, they could not do a C-section on me. I went into labor, let's put that way. I went into labor, I was in labor for over a day um dilated three centimeters stopped dilating and the blood pressure was it, i remember it was like 230 over 100 and something and i was seizing and stroked had a couple seizures stroke end up dyslexic um but it was harrowing um they didn't think i was going to make it i actually had to sign a waiver um because the doctor did not want to do surgery they did not want they wanted to literally let my daughter die and at the time I thought, oh, no, she has to be born. She has to be born. I made a soul contract with her. She has to be born. So I was like, no, I don't care. And I was like, you're too young. You're too young. I was 21 years old at the time. And I was like, no, she must be born. And I spoke to my BFF and I signed papers to say that my best friend was going to take the baby. I mean, literally, um, that's what happened. Uh, she actually went home after two days and I was the one in the hospital forever. I, I was the one they, they were still monitoring and didn't know if I was going to make it or not actually live or not after I had her. She, her big ass was fine. She was over 10 pounds. <laughs> no, I was not diabetic. She was just huge. She's five foot 11 now. So I was like focused on, okay, she has to live. And then I was shocked that I lived. I survived. And then later Archangel Gabriel came and told me, no, you're supposed to live. I said, but I thought the vision you showed me, I died. He goes, well, you kind of did die <laughs> with the cardiac arrest, but you pulled through. I was like, oh, okay. So I'm actually feeling better talking about this. I'm glad I'm doing it. So yeah, I, I 
left, uh, you know, I'd take a semester off because of dyslexia and recovering from the stroke and the cardiac arrest and the seizures. Um, went back to school, finished college, you know. Um, so she was always my reason for living. Literally. I was still suicidal. I still, I hoarded pills. That's what I did. I hoarded pills and it was like my emergency pills. If anything happened to my daughter, I'd take them and I'd go with her. That, that was always the plan because I so did, I always, like I said, it. I always say this, like, you know, when everyone would say, go to hell, when somebody would say to me, oh, go to hell, I'm like, well, you're here with me. We're already in hell. So ever since I was little, 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 I always said, yeah, this is hell. I, because the first, the first memory of my mom beating me at the age of four and almost killing me, I saw this demon come out of her. I saw her eyes turn black. Um, so I was like, oh my God, this is hell. That's when I came into realization. Oh my God, this is hell. And there are demons and people running around because I remember seeing one go into my grandmother when she was attacking my sister, my older sister. My younger sister never got beaten. Um, so I was just like, whoa, we're in hell and there are devils and there are demons everywhere. So, you know, never mind what's going on in Catholic school with the freaking Monsignor molesting all of us. Um, so I, I always felt this is hell anyway, you know, and I thought we had to learn whatever it is we're supposed to do and survive hell and to get out of hell. So I thought suicide was just a way out of earth, out of hell. Like if I said, I want to go back to God, I never said I want to go to heaven. I said, no, I just, I never believed in any of that. I said, I just want to go back to God. I just want to be reabsorbed since I was little. I just want to go back to God. So that's the way I thought about death. That's the way I always saw death. Because since I've always seen ghosts, you know, I've always was able to interact with, with interdimensional beings. I knew death was not what they were saying in the Bible. And I knew death was not what people feared. My, big, my biggest fear was actually living. <laughs> that was my big, because we were alive in hell. 3D is hell. So that was my biggest fear. So with my daughter, it kept me here on earth. I was living for her. Okay. Now, as she grew up and after a while, my daughter has always been a daddy's girl. Okay. So she was always stuck to the hip with my ex-husband. Um, and no, he is not her father, but he's been her father since she was a baby. So it, that was always daddy. So she was always daddy's girl. So, it, you know, after, by the time she became seven, and also my ex-husband was very abusive towards me mentally and uh, emotionally and spiritually. Like I couldn't meditate around him. I couldn't journal around him. He took, to me, my most sacred thing is my journal. And he always knew this. And I still have my Pocahontas journal where I drew pictures of my daughter when I knew she was going to be born. I drew pictures of my first home that I built. It was the house I was born in, in Haiti, my dad's house. I actually built that home. You know, I eventually had to do a short sale thanks to my ex-husband stealing all my money. But, you know, I built that home. You know, I fulfilled that, that dream. And so he went to my Pocahontas diary and he stole pages out of it. And he, would, he was constantly saying he was going to blackmail me with them, right? And I was just like, whatever, bro, because whatever, as you guys see, I'm a very open person. <laughs> so what's ever in that journal, I've already said to you. <laughs> so it's really, it's a joke, you, you know, but it was still very personal. You know, it was like, whoa, you know, that even though I'm very open and I don't give a shit, you know, about saying stuff, it still sucks that someone did that, especially since I've had that diary since I was like 12. That was so personal to me, you know? It's not like I was still writing in it. Those were the ramblings of a little girl. But I've had, I literally have like two crates full of journals right now uh, throughout the years. So 
that was very invasive. Okay. So I just felt, and my daughter was always taking his side, so to speak, even though he had physically abused her a few times and tried with me, you know, until, you know, I had to defend myself. Um, so, I mean, it's not like, I'm not saying he beat her nonstop. It's just like when he, he was on steroids, working out, becoming a meathead, you know, uh, he like pulled on her and swung her, you know, he didn't mean to do it that hard as they say, but it was like the roids, roid rage when he was not on the roids, he realized it because like he broke to rip the door, two doors off the hinges and punched holes in walls and his acne back started breaking out. His uh, balls started shrinking. His voice started getting high. You know, he started breaking out. His hair started thinning. Uh, it because he's so vain. His um, he's a narcissist. When those physical changes started happening, that's when he stopped the roids. Because then he was like, "Holy shit, uh, are the muscles worth my hair and my skin and uh, being charged thousands of dollars for punching holes in walls and apartments?" That was a no for him. So. When he's not on that, he's totally different. You know, it was the roid rage that when he yanked her off the couch and she banged her back on, on a, the side of the desk. That was the only time. He's never, like, hit her. But any which ways, that was always daddy, daddy, daddy. Okay? So I felt not needed. Literally, I felt not needed. So... I, I was starting to feel suicidal again. And so then that is when my son came to me. And he was like, he wants to experience ascension. Because <clears throat> angels get ascension too. They get their ascension jump. And the toughest, the biggest ascension jump you can get as an angel is to take you incarnate into a human body and help another human, one of your humans that you're supposed to be guiding and watching over in the flesh. Literally, that is the biggest, that's how they can get their ascension jump as a guardian angel. That's how guardian angels work it when it comes to, they, they could do, they still ascend from staying in the ethereal angelic form and watching you and guiding you. But if they really want that big level boost, they, they take human form, literally. So that was the deal with my son. We made that deal. Okay, fine. He goes, I'm going to keep you here on earth. I'm going to be born. And my thing was, I was really hating men at the time. Hating men because of my husband. And um, he showed me he was going to be a boy. I'm like, oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm not going to have you if you're a boy. No way. And I straight up said, I will have an abortion than have, than have a boy. And then he said to me, too late. I was like, what the fuck do you mean too late? I cannot be pregnant. I have an alien body. Okay. With my daughter, I had no idea I was pregnant until I was four and a half months pregnant. And I was like, oh my God, don't tell me I'm pregnant. Took two pregnancy tests, negative. Pregnancy tests for me do not come out positive. <laughs> okay. So I was like, oh my God, this reminds me of having my daughter. Is this why I've been eating a lot and losing a lot of weight? That's how I know I'm pregnant. I start eating ferociously and I lose weight. Like when I was pregnant with my daughter, I was 125 pounds before. By the time I was six months, I weighed 112. I went to 116 and then 112. By the time I was six months, I weighed 112 pounds. That's how much weight I lost. And then like six and a half months, seven months is when I started gaining weight, gaining weight. And I gained weight fast. Like I don't even show. And I still have my periods on six months pregnant. So I had no clue I was pregnant. Go to the doctor. Sure enough. Sonogram. I told him, please just give me a damn sonogram. Sonogram. He was like, oh my God, you're pregnant. And he's fully, fo he is fully formed. I was like, mother effer. Yeah, he, it was that far. It was that far along. So I got home and I was pissed and I threw open bottles of nail polish at my husband's head. I'll never forget that. He was like, what the hell? He could not walk by the living room without me throwing something at him. Um, <laughs> I was so ticked off because we we're actually in the middle of a divorce. And then like, yo, let's work it out. Blah, blah. You're pregnant. I should have kept going with the divorce. That was my mistake. That was my bad for not for saying yes. Any which ways, long story short, 
had my son, right? Guess what? Same deal with my son, went through eclampsia. Even before that, when I was seven and a half months pregnant, uh, I was given compazine because I was constantly sick, constantly in the hospital through vomiting, losing a lot of weight again. And um, I had, I went to anaphylactic shock when I was seven and a half months pregnant, almost eight months, intubated the whole shebang, almost lost my life again. Um, and then when I had him, um, eclampsy, emergency C-section, same damn thing all over again. Okay. Recovered, blah, 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 blah. Went back at the time I had my business, opened my business again, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So now... My son was the reason for me to stay alive. My son was the reason for me to stay on earth, okay? And um, now with what happened, with my son, you know, taking off to go to school in New York, going to stay with his dad without me knowing, and then my ex-husband turning around trying to sue me for uh, child support because in New York it's still you 24, just as long as you're a full-time student. My son was uh, 18 when he left, um, but he lost. He took me all the way to Supreme Court and I beat him every time, but it cost me a lot of money taking time off from work, going back. No, I did not use a lawyer. He had his lawyer team, but I knew it was in the right. You know, he was coming up with all this crazy shit, um, but it was very obvious what he was up to, especially since I never went after him for money. So it kept getting thrown out, thrown out, thrown out. And finally, the final decision was uh, Supreme Court of New York, which was in October, last October. I finally won last October. Okay. Took that long. So um, now that my son is still in New York, he decided, as you know, he graduated in June, but he just, he's doing an internship in New York, even though I got him the same internship down here. And now he's pissed off me for whatever reason, what my daughter said to him. And my daughter's still acting like a total jerk. I feel even though I'm doing this and I know I've played a big part in Ascension, but that part is coming to an end being the light worker Sherpa. Okay. I'm feeling, okay. I have nothing to do here anymore. I don't want to be here anymore. I'm done. I don't have my kids to live for. And then it was that depression has been coming on again. And um, my oversoul was like, you know, do you still want to build your number 22? As I look, of course, it's 22 <laughs> uh, on the timer. And I was like, yeah, I would love to do that. That's awesome. I get excited and happy about it. Because, you know, and then I was given the office. When I said yes, that's when I was told to go call for the office. And I got the office. And then I got all this furniture today. So I really do want to do that because in doing the, and it's not just one business. It's a whole slew of things that I'm supposed to be putting together. Let's put it this way. If I keep going with this, if anyone knows the profit, like Marcus Limonis, it's pretty much like that. I'm going to be pretty much doing something like that, okay? Um, I don't want to get into depth with it because, you know, this is not the place for it. So with all my talents and skills that I have, and you all know I have, a, I have more talents and skills than I've even mentioned, trust. Um, with everything I've done in this lifetime and the skills I've came into this lifetime with, they're all they're all going to be used they're all going to be used and it does excite me and i get so happy thinking about it but then i'm like i'm thinking who am i doing it for i'm not doing it for my kids who am i doing it for you know you feel that emptiness and it's not emptiness syndrome it's way beyond that um if my kids were away and we had good relationships, I'd be absolutely fine. I've been a mom more than half my life. I became a mom at 21. I'm very happy to have my own space, okay, at this point in my life. I could finally completely explore all of my abilities where I couldn't before. When everyone else was having fun and doing this and doing that and blah, blah, I was not. I got to travel because of modeling, but that was it but I was still in school and it was very much, I did it so I can go to school full time and have money, take care of myself and my kid and everything like that. Cause my marriage was more off than on, you know? Um, so 
I was, I'm, I'm having that sense of, I don't want to be here anymore. For what? Our, I helped. We did it. Completed. Energy grounded. Five, five G up. Helped as many people as I could. I don't have my kids to live for anymore. And that's when I heard, you will have that feeling and that what is going on with my children will persist until I get it into my thick skull that my life is for me. Living my life is for me. I have to live my life for me. I'm not living my life for my children. Any of you out there married, if your spouse or your parents, like my BFF, my real B, my BFF in New York, who's, you know, like a soulmate twin flame, who I've known since second grade, she used to say, if something happens to my parents, I, I don't even want to be here because what's the use of being here? My life is for them. The same way I say my life is for my kids. And there's plenty of you out there, moms, who say this, and particularly some moms out there who I'm hearing saying this. I'm feeling it right here. My life is for my kids. Everything you're doing is for your kids. I'm doing this for my family. No, that's the lesson I have to learn right now, that it's outside of them. They came to me. We did soul contracts to keep my ass here. But now it's like, okay, we kept you here. Yeah, you you did above and beyond when it comes to helping with ascension and awakening. But there's a lot more that your higher self wants to complete. You want to completely empty out your toolbox. You want to use every tool in the box that you have and you have a lot and I can, you know, as a master builder, again, remember that's my secondary number, the master builder. It's not something I have to explore building in five, five D building on earth with five D energies, building, helping build a new earth, helping bring along the golden age. That's my secondary number. So I have to choose to accept and receive that my life is for me to live. It's not for me to live for anyone else. So in saying that, I know there are many of you out there who are like, if I didn't have my kids, I, I wouldn't want to be here. I'd rather be dead. You have to say to yourself that your life is for you to live. You're living your life for you, for your soul, for your soul growth, for your soul advancement. It's a completely different way of looking at yourself. It's going to be a lot to think about, isn't it? And that's my final hurdle. I was told that I really, I needed to get over this hurdle in order to receive Everything, what I've just started receiving is just, it's a muse bouche, the way it was shown to me. It's like a little of what I could receive and accomplish with what I receive. It's so huge. So that's what I'm telling you. If you're sitting there thinking, oh, I'm, I'm just alive for my family. Oh, I'm alive for my boyfriend or girlfriend. That 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 blows my mind when people say that. But it's like you didn't bring them into this earth. <laughs> they're they're grown ass people. Um, but still, people could have that type of attachment. Um, but the sense of responsibility with your children or your parents, or whoever it is you're taking care of, or your or your spouse, your husband or wife, your spouse, saying, you know. Without them, I can't live. You have to find your reason for living, your reason for living outside of them. Because your worth is not just about being with them and taking care of them. Your worth is outside of some other person. We're all one, but we're still individual souls who are, who are growing, ascending at different levels, awakening at different levels. Okay, I hope I made some type of sense. That was a rough one to get out, okay? All right, Lady V out. I'll see some of you guys um, tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow. 
on Saturday, Saturday evening, 7 p.m. Okay. Talk to you later. Um, go to higheromholistics.com. Bye.